and he is hot, panting, probably feeling slightly on the uncomfortable side with the size of his belly, but look at the size of those paws. They are enormous, much larger than the paws of a leopard, even Tumba couldn't compete with a big male lion. And we always talk about how big Tumba, the young male leopard's tracks are. For a leopard, they're pretty big, but nothing quite trumps those feet of a male lion. Now, there's a lot of commotion going on on the radio. Um, Alice, I can't get a, a word in. Maybe you can ask Tristan if he can call the sighting in that he's gone, he's static, he's, he's just sitting. We're just off Pangolin, Bang, Pangolin track. He'll get our visual from the road. Um, I just I'd rather focus on here and then he can maybe update the sighting once there's a gap Thank you very much So he's grooming himself now. He's been on a bit of a walk. I think we must have just missed him drinking at Treehouse Dam I think that's where he would have come in from Hoffman's not it's not a very far route that he's walked had a drink of water And now he's come through here whether he's going to lay up for the rest of the morning. I'm not sure just yet He might still continue um, heading on the move. I think you're going to head in the direction of where the Nkuhumas were, which is east, somewhere in Bivol's Hook. They seem to be closer towards the Kruger boundary now. Okay, great. Thanks. Sorry. Just chatting to Alice. Alice is just confirming about that sighting. But he is a magnificent boy. Now, you know who I'm excited to see? If this is what Tenyo looks like. M Fumo is quite big in terms of his body size. We always thought that he had the biggest body out of the Birmingham boys. So he must be monstrous now. And he'll also have a beautiful mane. And Suku and Nena must be looking gorgeous as ever. They've always been two very, very pretty lions with fairly dark manes. But they we always suspected that they're slightly older than Tinyo and Mfumo. And that's why there was such a color difference. Now, a question from Alexander with camouflage. Wondering why do lions have a playing coat? whereas the other cats don't well that's not actually entirely true because if you look if you look at a caracal the caracal's slightly what well, we call them a roy cat a red cat is another name or an african lynx they've also got a similar sort of coloration to their body slightly more reddish though and completely plain no markings like a leopard or like a tiger has on or a cheetah and it's just for different types of camouflage so Lions can adapt, they can live in most places in Africa, they're not just restricted to the savanna. But when you're hunting in tall grass, to have a tawny coloured body like this, it's ideal. It's beautiful, it blends in very, very, very well. So even though they don't have spots, their camouflage is still perfect. I'm just trying to think what else has got a fair, yeah, well, I suppose it's not the only cat, like I said, the caracal. And then you get different types of cats all over the world, and I'm talking about sort of wild ones, not domesticated cats. Um, that have got playing colored coats too. So it's not all of it. They don't need it. But he's beautiful though. So it's nice because we thought at one point we didn't think all the Birmingham boys were going to have dark coats, a uh, dark mane, sorry, but they do. And there you can see his right canine. You can see how it is broken. So that's another way to identify him. Yellow teeth, but still looking good. Dory, you've noticed all the scars on his face, and you said that he is quite scarred up. He is, but him and Fumo used to get into quite a few battles, and they seem to be the ones also that the, Ngu the Nguhuma lionesses used to swat through the face a couple of times. But it's not uncommon to see male lions with all scars like this. They do sort of come into conflict with lots of other male lions. And then again, as we were talking about it earlier, they'll fight amongst themselves too. Now. It's very rare to actually see a lion that has a beautiful, clean face. The pretty boys. I like the boys that have been sort of battling it out in terms of taking pictures and things. It's beautiful to see animals with all sorts of scars. We have a new viewer who's just joined us. Pictured Grace, welcome. It's great to have you and well, what a great day to start watching and having one of the Birmingham boys. Now your question was, what is the lifespan of a lion? Well, it depends. Male and female slightly different. Now with the boys, they don't live as long as the lionesses do. Um, like we've just been chatting about, they're in conflict. They're the ones that protect the pride. They're constantly marking and defending the territories. So the chances of them being taken out by another male lion 
are a lot higher. And then also with their prey that they're hunting, buffalo, giraffes, sometimes even elephants, it's very dangerous for them too. So they don't always live very long. So I would say a male lion in this particular area is not more than about 12 years old, maybe slightly older at times, sometimes even 10 years old. So between 10 and 12 years, I'd say. The lionesses can live for a few more years longer than that. I've seen a lioness that was about 15 years old before. But then they're fairly frail. It's a tough life for, for a big cat. But look at him. Luckily, you don't have the flies bothering you today, Tignol. If this was summer, he'd be shaking his head. He'd be biting at the air. There's a couple of flies on his body, you can see just to the right of him, it looks like it. But they don't seem to be bothering him too much around his eyes. Every now and then you just see his tail swish, but obviously not biting him too much. <laughs> Curious one, you've said that it also looks like he's eaten a buffalo all by himself. No, I don't, so not, not quite a buffalo, but a zebra. The fact that he's come out of, uh, he's crossed Gowrie Main, coming out of Hoffman's, uh, that means it must be the lion that everyone was looking at that was feeding on a zebra kill. And I suppose that's what the lions are having to feed on at the moment, is lots and lots of zebra. They seem to be the only animals, as well as the waterbuck, that are around. Hopefully the buffalo will return and come back towards the Juma, move away from the river systems and come up here, and then it'll be really, really exciting because we'll have the return of the lions and remember when a pride catches it in one day they'll on a day or two or it depends on how big the pride is of course but normally we see the Ngumas feeding on a kill for about two or three days i suspect that'll be slightly less now because they've got six very hungry lions that aren't cubs and little anymore they'll be eating three or four times the amount that they were last year probably even a bit more than that so maybe the carcasses won't last but how exciting is it we've got this boy and hopefully we're going to see all four of the birminghams together again that's something i still have not seen i've only ever seen three of them together so i'm still waiting for that day when the fourth one comes along and there we go look at that belly now <laughs> he's eating the beach ball now Actually, has he got, is that blood underneath his mane or is it just water? It's just underneath his chin. I'm just trying to have a look. You can see there's wet pit, just water. Oh no, it's just water. No. Just double checking so you can see that he has drank. He did go down for a drink. So Sharon, you were wondering how old is this male lion? Now something that guides tend to always forget to do is we'll find lions, we'll determine their age, and then they never seem to get any older. I remember and I'm guilty of it, all guys are guilty of it. We called the Charleston ma males five and a half for about a year, <laughs> like they didn't age. So, like I said, Tignon and Fumo seem to be slightly younger than Nsuku and uh, Nena, but I reckon by only a few months, maybe six months or so. So I would put these boys, they must be about six years old now, maybe, maybe even slightly older than that, maybe six and a half, because I reckon that Nsuku and, and Nena must be about seven because we saw them with these beautiful dark manes already last year they were looking good and even early into this year they were much larger so these boys are just coming into the prime of their lives now and they typically take their first uh, so they have their first take over as dominant males when they're between five and five and a half years old so it's somewhere around there it's obviously very difficult to give an accurate date of birth unless you were there and you witnessed mom giving birth but you sort of just roughly gauge and these lions didn't come from here they've come from very far away just because we haven't seen the birmingham boys i suppose with all the new viewers that we had we better chat about where where they're from so they come up from the timbavati which is north of us i'm not exactly sure how as the crow flies how many kilometers north of us but quite quite a distance from from where we are and they moved all the way south so even the Timbavati is open to the Greater Kruger National Park, so they would have gone into Kruger, moved down this way, and then they, they settled in. So the farm that they actually were born on, or the, from where the pride uh, is, is called the Birmingham Farm. That's where they got their names. That's typically how the boys are named as well, is that whichever property they were born on, they will get that sort of name. And these were all farms, in, especially in the Sabi Sand and the Timbavati, they were being used for various things, so they have these other names. And now I think he's gonna sleep here. 
I don't think that this boy is going to do too much. I think he's going to take a rest. He looks exhausted, but we'll sit with him for a little bit longer. Let's go across to Tristan, who's got a different type of predator.